Hi Johnny. Today it's Tuesday, the fourth, fourth of August 2015. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to see my barrister, Shannon Withers, in the city. And I'm just running through a few notes at the moment that I've handwritten. I put them online. And um, um, the case, how I wanted to unfold. So I'll just give a brief, and tomorrow morning I'll make another video in length of exactly what I'm going to say to him in this case for Cook Street, 77 Cook Street. I've been going on since 2008 when the Lisbon Treaty was signed. That's when everything started to happen with that land block. And um, I followed it all the way through and documented everything so that you can see unfolding a uh, classic inside job of the Crown Corporation's fraud, land transactions. When you do land um, claim or confiscation of lands, then that's a serious matter of mortgage comes under this flag of Admiralty. All the mortgages comes out of this flag in this country and around the world. That's exactly what I want to say to the people in Britain who are waiting patiently for us to make a move and use this jurisdiction of power uh, over other less authoritative power of the king. Okay? So what I want to do is just give you an overview of this case on Cook Street, why it's such a controversial matter where it's been covered up by the police for so long and it's really a bad title. It is a bad title from the New South Wales government here in Wellington and their Lynn's titles and Maori land titles and crown titles all mixed up and played around with without proper authority from the chiefs, the real chiefs, not the mischiefs. You've got the iwi Maori on that side and you've got the chiefs of the king and the hapu on this side. Two different natives. Okay? I just want to make that quite clear that where I'm speaking from is a king's voice of his admiralty court martial law and bank mortgage land levy instruments that have come from Westminster and gone around the world under this flag jurisdiction. Okay? So um, with Cook Street, it started off as a bad title from a Crown Grant British title. It's a British title. These lands in Auckland are gifted lands under the Manukau Land Company Scotland. Okay? Most of the lands here in the north are Scottish titles under the Manukau Land Company Real Estate Company in Glasgow, Scotland, that sold these lands as Manukau lands by others who were who, who did not have a Manukau title. I'm holding it here. Okay, so that's that title. Then you've got the Waitangi titles and that's Kingi Todor's Chiefs Department. I'm handling those ones as well in his Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. That's this flag is the King's flag. There's no other King's flag in the world except this one that's got all its instruments inside it for these documents of titles on land and in the CB. It's a Admiralty flag for the sea law. Law of the sea. King of the sea. King of the royal revenue of prize possessions and anything that's got the crown's name on it has come out of the king's title. Okay, so now I'm just going to skip over these things that um, these um, 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 types of acts that I'll be using with the barrister. But he's going to play in that game. 
You can't use your own native titles because they've got nothing to do with mortgage contracts. These are contracts that I'm um, um, practicing with their barristers. They are supposed to know all this stuff. They, they're not supposed to play around with it against the court because the court is there to referee for the registrar of those titles or of law in the court. They're the sheriff when they're really not a real sheriff like this one. This is a real sheriff. Flag here yeah. is this eight point star sheriff. Okay, so we're using that authority in our own time but not in New Zealand law acts that have been broken, clearly broken by the police themselves and by the people on 77 Cook Street. The landowners have lumped the bill off the last owners and the last owners. So what's happened is the first title in 2008 was a bad title when it got sold. And then the next one came along and bought it and that title was bad. And then these two landowners that are there now, they've got a holding on to a bad title. It's supposed to be the conveyancing lawyers that's supposed to tell and disclose the sale of the property clear of encumbrance or any other interests. We have an interest in the land because it's come from a native title. And there's no Maori that can stand up to the titles I'm holding the Manukau titles, they cannot put their name to it because I'm speaking for the Manukau land company and the Manukau family themselves because the judge at that time married the Manukaus and the Wanawas. Okay, so there's no way anybody's going to contest that part of what I'm going to say to the barrister that clearly the law has been broken, not by me by but the policeman, Natalie Flower Du Brown, detective. A lot of police are getting caught in fraud because they've been made to do that. They've been paid to commit fraud so that it stirs business up if you don't see it. If you don't contest the law, they get away with it. They've got away with too much, too long. And so you had to catch them in the fraud committing it before, during and after and prove where the fraud is, what act they broke. So that's what I'm saying. I'm pointing out to the barrister which acts they have broken, clearly broken, and they can run from this and that and everything. So what I'll do is I'll just tell you, I've started off in Section 24 of the Official Information Act, 18, 1982 for um, my barrister exhibits. So I'm writing exhibits. I'll put these online on Facebook, just like how I write them. But um, I'm disclosing, I'm asking for disclosure. The person John Wanoa in capitals. This is serious stuff. And Mr. Wanoa, W-A-N-O-A -A in capital. They're playing around with letters in their legalese form and they're pulling money out of a trust they've set up with this person called John Wanoa and I'm saying disclose I want full disclosure because the judge granted me full disclosure I've only got a part in part of the disclosure from the police and that came on the 7th of July it's taken right from January till July to get the full disclosure. What's going to happen here while I'm thinking about it is this. That's held my business up. I'm hanging around from going to Westminster with the authority from Westminster, uh, from Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court and the Chief, King Itaurua and his Chiefs to go there and put this flag up. And I'm still here from 2012. You'll see on my site I've put the company's house in London in 2012. I'm supposed to register it 
that's when I was going over with this Cook Street. But then the police jumps in and pulls me up and they've tampered with my information and my authority of this flag and this eight point star. You see? When Natalie Flowerdew Brown took my shirt off, confiscated it and took it away as evidence, she's in real trouble for stealing my shirt, my authority to Britain. Okay? To speak for the Manukau titles on these lands. Okay, so that's very serious. When you get into land issues, if you're not a lawyer, you're in trouble. What she did was she fashioned all her documents and I knew what she was doing because I'm in real estate for a long, long few years and I knew she was breaking the law but I was just going to watch how she does it. So she fashioned the document as if she's a lawyer, a convincing land lawyer at that for these land owners on Cook Street. Very serious playing around with the Bar Association's business. All right? The barrister wasn't very happy with what she did with documents that had no seal on them of a court, no seal of the government, no seal of Westminster through the Queen, no seals at all, only the police logo. You see, so the police are making their own laws up. This is what I'm contesting, is to tell my barrister, to tell the police to throw the case out and let me seize that property with a, a property writ execution to seize it, seize the property and all the assets and everything to pay for their mistake and their crimes, the landowners, and lock them up, right? So what's happened is this. Natalie Flowerdew Brown altered, tampered with, and changed the names of the witnesses and put them in capitals. Little did she know her constable friend was putting her name in capitals without knowing, because that's two different departments. The fraud department at the back of the police station in Auckland Central, and the constables in the front part, the common law part in the front. The back part is the commercial um, private contract place from the courts. They work in the private, which is this flag. This flag of Admiralty is private nobody's business. That's why they're getting away with this. I want to point out to you people watching these videos that this is tampering with the King's Law of the Sea. Okay? And that's my business with my chiefs. We're here for our land. And it's that land in question that I'm talking about with these acts to use these acts of New Zealand government, the Crimes Act 1961 in the sections I've put on for the barrister to pick. He's got a handful of them that I've picked out that she's committed crime this, crime that, and crime this, and crime that. You add it up, you can see it yourself. And so what she's done is she's tampered with my name and put it in capitals, and somebody that's got an email like mine, I want to disclose who that other John Wanoa is and arrested me and not that other John Wanoa, right, in the capitals. And I want to see and meet him and see he countersigned the bail bond to release me from prison as blackmail. That's what I'm saying. Disclose to me who Mr. Wanoa is, capitals, and John Wanoa in capitals and I want to see where is the money and the inheritance that is likely belongs to me. I want all of it back in my custody. So that's what I'm saying to the barrister. I want that back because I signed to get that money and it's gone somewhere. I want to find where it's gone, who to, and liable them. I've gotten there too. The Pope Francis and his motu propria destroyed all their laws. That's another uh, uh, point.
point against them, a legal point against the police and the courts. He said, they can't use those laws on me. And they, little do they know is this law here, the flag, overrides that law. And this admiralty still carries on with its law, but the Pope's admiralty that they've been using for years to dupe everybody and fraud, that's why I took it away, to stop the fraud and all this corruption in the legal system over the common people. And that's why my job is to protect our native lands from uh, being exploited by thugs and crooks in the system of John Keyes and his Panama tax havens is caught up in that lot too with this flag. So they're going to have to answer to that. All I want out of this is the barrister to ask the judge to settle out of court to settle Natalie Flower Dew Brown and no other police to stand on my road while I seize that property. Manukau land title property back into the Manukau hapu and our hapu, the Moai hapu. Okay, so that's what I, that my job uh, that I'm doing for the chiefs uh, of this country, and that's the main chiefs' titles to Britain. Okay, so I'm speaking for British Brexit, England, Wales, and Altair, New Zealand as part of that new Britain establishment government. Okay, so I'm speaking from that level with this flag to go straight to put it up in Westminster. I should have been there long ago, 2012. Okay, so this is how it goes. Listen up. Um, I've just dated things for the 5th of August today, and I'll put it in that fashion, writing, in writing. I've only made this today fresh. And um, I've gone off the land uh, issues down the East Coast to go and f focus on this, get my brain around this lot because I've been away from it for a long time, and update myself for tomorrow meeting with um, um, Shannon Withers, my barrister from Balkan Chambers. I'm hoping that he will do due diligence and fulfill my instructions and orders to take to the judge and settle this matter out of court, gone. I want it dismissed and her locked up and all the others that have named 43 altogether liable now. She's liable, the whole lot of them. She's even liable, the police force, the whole 15,000 of them. She's liable, the whole lot. Okay, so the power note is stuck on each one's head. It's not going to come off because I've made statements about that. I've made clear intentions to build them. And the balance of what they owe that they can't pay, the Queen has to pick up that tab, the Pope who made these laws for them to screw, and his churches and state governments, parliaments, they have to pay. Church of England has to pay. Westminster has to pay. The governments put these John Key government to run havoc, free reign, without controls. And so, um, uh, with that, um, John Key is liable. They've libeled each other. The Governor General is liable. The Queen is liable. The Rothschild Banks and the Bank of England is liable. This is going to bankrupt the Rothschild Bank of England. And our pound note, the original Tafio pound note, Maori pound note, or native pound notes, take precedence over his fraud pound note. And that's what I'm saying about finance instrument. That's it. This is the financial instrument that put banks together under the Bank Act, uh, 1834, Bank of England Act, and the Pound Note Act, 1834, and the Gold Coins Act, 1834, King William IV. Okay, so that's the money side. This is the commercial side. 
And if those people who are flying this flag don't know how that works, it's because you have no authority to use it for that reason. You can fly it, but you can't use its commercial power. You have no right to use it because it's too late to try and put that all together. Okay? You should have been doing it right back and connected up to the old titles. You have to have a line of continuity of administrative documents, doctrines of discovery title to go with this flag, the kings of the kings and Moai statue. Okay? You've got to have those in place, but it's too late. There's no time for it. So I'm saying, disclose the person, John Wanoa in capitals, Hawani Wanoa in capitals, uh, signatories to that person's inheritance. I have a claim to this trust. I hadn't had, want to find him, that person, to see if he is my brother, signatory to me and his trust is his beneficiary. I mean his beneficiary, he's the trustee. So I want to meet that trustee. That's what I want to disclose. I want it disclosed. I'm getting all that ready to take that disclosure note to my barrister should have the rest of the disclosure. This is going to be very interesting to see what because he hasn't given it to me yet. He's been holding on to it. So I think he's had little talks with the judge and the police and everybody else and the government to say, what are we going to do with John Wanoa? Which John Wanoa are you talking about? The one with two legs or the one that's floating around like a bumblebee? Okay, so uh, jokes aside, um, we are being serious here um, on this Mr. John Wanoa, capital letter. You'll find your names are in capital letters too, but all I'm doing is modelling myself out so that you have a claim to when you join the Moai Powerhouse Group, London. We're going to kick it off next week and fire up Tagpay and Presta Shop and Blue Snap Gateways and all their customers to use the pound note against the levy debtors. Right? We've got levy creditor, that's us. And the eight point star of St. Patrick order, the New World Order, that's it. This is the New World Order that we're talking about. This flag is the New World Order with those eight points on the star. Okay, in the four corners of the earth. Uh, so, I'm going to um, talk to him about disclosing that mystery man. I don't call him a straw man, I call him a mystery man. He's very mysterious because he's got a mask on his face. I want to see where the money is and who got paid. Right? I need to see who got paid because I'm waiting for my bit, for all my troubles, all these years. 2008, that's four, four and six, ten years. Ten years has taken to bring them to justice, bring them in front of the court. All right? And if Natalie doesn't turn up, I'm going to force the court hearing I'm going to force the court hearing. If she doesn't turn up, the case is dismissed, thrown out. Because she's supposed to be back here in front of me and the judge and my barrister. She's not here. She's still in Solomon Island where they threw her off and hit her there. So she's right out of the spotlight from you people seeing the fraud woman that I'm talking about online. It's too late. There's too much stuff. Put too many videos out about her and those crooks in that land block. Simon Brent Browntree and... James Pierce Brown, you're in trouble. You're in trouble with the law because you covered it up. You covered up your own dirty tracks and Doug Ricard Bell's dirty tracks and you're using the same lawyers, uh, lawyers uh, um, uh, to do your dirty work. And they're going to get caught too. Right? They're going to get caught, the both of them. Uh, that were doing Doug Ricard Bell's titles. He came over from Australia, Sydney, and he's a property developer with um, um, uh, the other fellow, um, the fellow that got bankrupt. Um, and so he did a dirty deal and bought it for cheap. 
Cook Street, and then you've bought a dirty deal too. So you've all got dirty deals um, out of it, and can't sell it without putting our name on the title. That's what Lynn's failed to do, is put our name, interests, unregistered interests, on that title. We have the right to put our names on that title, where it came from. You're trying to say it came from thin air. See? You see? You see? It came from a native. And you have you can't say which one. It's not the people you've got in the iwi. They're not real. They're not real people. They're being made up by your crown corporations, Donkey. You made it all up in Helen Clark. Okay, so disclose to me number two. That was number one before. Number two, disclose to me the Queen Elizabeth the second seal of the Auckland District Court to Westminster Sovereign Monarch, Queen Elizabeth II. Show me the court seal. You won't find any. You won't find any at all, because I followed the Lisbon Treaty all the way through, and the Queen is not there. She's in Brussels on documents. She's physically in England, but she's on documents and titles with the Pope and the EU Parliament, Germans, over there, and the HM Treasury, she's hooked the money out of you people in Britain. This is what you don't know. You don't know how this works on the Admiralty private side of her business. That's why she's made herself immune from prosecution. There is nobody that can um, uh, convict her or Obama because he's getting permission from her. She's abusing our King's Law of the Sea of Admiralty banking. And commerce. She's abusing it, you people in Britain. She needs to be hung with the Hanging Chains Act 1834 of Death Flag as a pirate. She's a pirate and so is all the other people connected to her. And her Governor Generals, all of them here, are liable. Okay, Jerry Matapurai is trying to sneak into Britain as a Governor, as a Ambassador of New Zealand and the Queen gives him permission to sell this place from England. No, it's not going to happen. British government, hang that man. Arrest him. Don't let him into England. I'm coming there. I'm coming there with this flag to save Britain from the thugs. Okay? We've got King Ernest Augustus there. He's the inheritor of this flag. Put him into Westminster as the King of Britain, UK, England, okay, and the world, and the Commonwealth, government of the world, with Moai, the safety of God's law, L-O-R-E, and the King's man's law, L-A-W, okay, so that's that part, sort of, I'm saying these things over and over and over again, so you understand fully what and who we are as native to you people in Britain, your partner that's been shoved under the table for all these years, hidden from you people and us, the Maori people and all those people in the islands, have been shoved aside for these smart colonial, colonial people from Australia running this place havoc in Government Wellington. I'm going to sack them with our chiefs. want them sacked. Sue Nicora down in Gisborne wants them set. We were doing this in 2012. We were doing this on Waitangi. And Doug Hodaki got in the way and said cup of tea. And then that's when John Key had his chance to slip out and didn't come back in front of me. You remember that, John Key. You got away with it. Not the Governor General. And then Satman. He got sacked right there. He got sacked by Sue Nikora, and I put the documents in front of him and told him who I am, the Maui. And he still didn't answer us. He never answered us. And he's going to get the bill. He gets the bill, the biggest bill out him for offending me and my chiefs. Okay? So that, I'll just put that one in so you know we're in serious trouble with them. Number two, disclose that, the Queen and the seal. The seal of the court is missing in the Supreme Court here. 
there is no seal from Westminster under the Queen because she's in EU Parliament. Did you listen? Can you hear what I'm saying? Your Queen is not here. And you've got a picture of the Queen above the judge's head. She's not there. It's just a picture. And to fool you to thinking that the Queen is still around. She doesn't care stuff about the treaty or Maori. She doesn't care. She's never been on Kingi Tauru's Marae in Titi Marae. She's never come in there. She won't go there because this is a vision that she's answerable to. Only John Key came in there and got sacked off. See, so he's not supposed to be on those lands at all, Kingi. John Key has no legal right, legal right to be on that land or in Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court. It's offensive for him and his government to go in there because we've seized it on documents. That's going through the court with my barrister. You see how cunning these people are running this place. Okay? Um, that's why it's in a mess like um, Hillary Clinton and Obama. Messed the whole place up. Uh, number three. Disclose to me the seal of the courts, the legal authority to arrest me, Natalie Flower Do Brown. Number four. I got a late disclosure, 7th of July, from the police uh, acting for the accused Natalie Flowerdew Brown. I'm accusing her in a counterclaim. I'm counterclaiming against her claim against me, person to person. Me injured her injurer. I'm turning her into accused. She's the accuser. I'm the accused. Now, I'm the accuser and she's the accused. Okay? I'm switching the roles because she can't furnish to the court or to my barrister any information to back up her statements on her documents that she used to arrest me. You see? I've got them in my bag ready to take to the barrister again. It's not worth the paper it's written on. See? But I had to catch her doing it to me. The worst person to pick on was me. I'm very good in law. Uh, disclose to me why Natalie Flower Du Brown forged her illegal documents to arrest me as it clearly shows tampering with the witness's information in capital letter legalese and lower letter case writings of an amateur person purporting to look like impersonating a lawyer or a barrister documents of a legal nature of amounts to forgery. So I'm saying to the barrister, she's forged the documents to arrest me. This is what the police are doing all the time with you people. They're arresting people. You check the documents, check the documents to make sure it's got a seal of authority, authority from somewhere, someone, so you can pin the bill to them. That's what we're going to do with the power note. Pin the bill to whoever's breaking the law and liable them. That's what the Pope said, liable them. They can't get away from that law. I'm making that quite clear on this video that the Pope has taken those laws away to stop the fraud inside land titles, especially mortgages, and conveyancing instruments and instruments to seize property and to seize assets that the police are doing for their own private businesses. They've got 14 businesses in the police force in Invest New Zealand Limited in Tapora Street down on Mahuhu Crescent where I lived in the city. That's why I went there to investigate them all. And now I'm investigating each person. I was there to investigate the titles on the lands. Now I've got all that. Now I'm investigating each person that I accuse on these videos, online. When I say your name, you're in trouble with the chiefs here and me, the sheriff, the sheriff. Okay, this is real people. This is real. Don't thumb your nose up at it because you might land yourself a bounty of a pound note with a big figure. One trillion pounds, that's the minimum against you. 
Uh, number six, what is the reason behind falsifying documents to blackmail me to be released from prison? I had to sign a bail bond with these capital letters all over it. Okay? And as soon as I signed that, they let me go. It's like blackmail. All right? They have taken that instrument away. That, that was created from Natalie Fowdu Brown's documents. That when she came in and arrested me, those documents were passed on to the court, uh, to the jail. And then to the department, it ends up in the court. So the court's handling those forged documents. See, you see? Can you see? I'm being very plain. Nothing complicated. I'm just saying the handling of documents that started a process of arrest of me, the person. A natural person is in lower case. A legal person. They turned me into a legal fiction person. I call mystery man. Right? So they've copied their wrote the name into another language that only they can understand on their documents that you can't have any interest in. They've got a financial interest in a contract with me. They made a contract. This is a contract flag. It is the law of contracts, the flag of the world and the British government. They're tampering with the British law which belongs to the Hapu native. You see what I mean, Kingy? Can you see the cookie crumble? Right. What is the reason behind falsifying those documents and blackmail me? Blackmail comes up. The barrister has to ascertain. He has to digest what I'm saying because he can only operate. He's getting paid from somewhere. Right? They don't go into their bank and pull the money out to pay him. It comes from you and me. They take it off me and you and make this funny name up. That's fraud. It's fraud. Without telling you what they're doing with you. Because they say they own you. See? They don't own me. They own documents. They own documents. Forged documents. Forged documents forged documents. That's what I'm saying. I'm a document contract man in real estate. So you see what contracts are? All the contracts are liable because of what the Pope said. He's taken those laws away. It's up to you to use a law but he knows you can't use any other law because you're stuck with his law. So if you use it, you're in trouble because he said you can't use it. All around the world, it's come out of this flag. Believe me, it's come out of this flag. This is the only flag that can go around the world and circumvent, circumvent the whole world with that sort of power. Okay, so we've got... What is the reason behind falsifying documents to blackmail me and to receive money from an account that has a name likeness to my name and surname of that author to that inheritance countersign someone countersign I uh, have a claim to that name I want back in my possession as theft of my property disclosed to me I want it disclosed you see that, that's what I'm demanding if they don't squash the case then I'm going to take the property that's how I'm saying um, to the barrister. Okay, so that's there, over the page. Quote from Pope Francis, destroyed all his corporations and trusts that need these laws of the sea of Admiralty, mortgage, bank, instruments, multi-propria. That's what he calls it. The document he put it together. I've got it here to take to the barrister, but he's already got it, but I'm holding it on my little trusty iPad. I'm going to there. So I can use that in front of him. And um, um, 
uh, offence to use these, uh, it is a punishable offence to use these UCC laws, civil laws, canon law, courier law, admiralty law, um, bank mortgage, lien, bonds, bails, instruments against me, the native chief, under King William IV, admiralty laws of the sea, mortgage, liens, levy, debtor instruments, 1830, 1837, um, um, acts of Westminster Parliament. Okay, so all I'm saying is my authority is tied up in this way. In Vatican City Law, number 1X of 11th of July, 2013, the country admins, admins amendments to the Criminal Code and Criminal Procedures Code, any person holding administrative judicial mandate in the Holy See, paid or unpaid, is liable under Section 4 of Motor Property. All that says is this, the sea, Holy See, is all the countries that have their churches, the Catholic churches in, like Auckland, and that's the Holy See, all their congregation in that area where that law is practiced. The law is practiced in the churches and parliament, okay? Uh, the Catholic churches in the parliament, and they're liable. I'm liabling all of you people under that section for of motu propria. These are the laws that the Pope has taken from you and destroyed all the trust. That trust that's set up with John Wanoa and Mr. Wanoa, capitals, any name in capital, is destroyed. They cannot use it to make money and they're making money out of it. Okay, so I want to see, I want a balance of how much that inheritance that I'm claiming belongs to me. I want that straight away. Straight away. They've paid themselves. I believe my barrister got paid from the courts registrar because they are sheriff. They haven't got the authority above this sheriff. They're acting as a sheriff under vice admiralty when the queen seal is not there. This is a seal, people. This is the seal of King William with his house, horse. He's on his horse and his ship of Admiralty in the background. And his crown on top. And his eight-point star, New World Order. This is the New World Order hat that I put on my head. Okay? It gives me that authority to speak for the king. Mm -hmm. May not be a king, but I can certainly use the law that was our law to the native chiefs. I'm speaking for the chiefs to show them how the law works in our favour on these lands, native lands, that belong to us. They're trying to buy them out. They'll never get to buy them out past Napoli. Napoli, you're listening? Don't sell and settle the land. Or less. This is the full amount I'm talking about. The full amount and more your own. This is how to do it, Kingy. This is how to do it. Leave that to me and they'll pick it up. The young people will learn this at a fast, great knots. Okay? You come to school and you'll learn very quick. Anybody, anybody wants to know this law and my law. Vatican law uh, disclosed. I want disclosed the natural man, which is me, John Hawani Wanoa, that's me, the natural man, I'm disclosed on my documents. I want to, I want to disclose the other John Wanoa, and I want to disclose the natural person, Natalie Flaudu Brown, standing in front of me, if she's not there and still in Solomon Islands, cut the court case and dismiss. Okay? That's what I want. I want a court case next Tuesday. I've already made note here. My barrister, you're watching this video because I'm going to email it to you. In front of all these people watching around the world, big audience now, and especially New Zealand people watching these videos, that I instruct you 
to have Natalie Flower Dew Brown right in front of me on Tuesday. Eighth. Tuesday. It's the fourth today. Fifth. Sixth Sunday. Seventh Monday. Eighth Tuesday. I want her in front of me. It's taken seven months for her to appear in the court in front of me. And I'm not going to let my business wait around, wait around, wait around for her when it suits her to be in front of the court and the judge. She's not there. She misses. And all my documents are true and correct and uncontested because they cannot contest it. They cannot refute anything I say because I'm holding the titles to Cook Street. And I want them locked up. I want all those people who got on my road, 43 of them locked up. 43 of them locked up. You play around with our law, the British are watching you. They're watching you mischiefing people. Of course you Of course you red-handed. Right here. I want to disclose why you write like this. Why you can't write normally, Natalie Flower Dew Brown. You and me. You and me. One at a time. I'm taking one at a time. On that day, I'm taking you to court and those two landowners, Simon Brent Roundtree and James Pierce Brown, to court. That's it. If you don't turn up, gone. Because I've been trying to get you into court to stand in front of me. But you put the police in front of me. You put the police in front of me and your conveyancing lawyers stood there <coughs> with the police in front of you. I'm taking the, telling the barrister to take the police out of it. Out as third parties. Take them out, stand down. Stand down from the judge, stand down. And let me go and seize my property with a rip. That's what I want you to do. Um, Shannon, let's get a rip. Um, rip of execution to confiscate the property. That's the proper word of this uh, law disclosed who tampered with the witnesses statements and made their name into capitals <coughs> um, mixed up with lower case the same as your name Natalie Flower Dew Brown it appears in capitals as well your friend the constable who came here you were doing all the talking he should have been arresting me you arrested me you, that person, arrested me and offended me. And he didn't do anything. All he did when, when he got back was he put your name in the capitals. It made you liable because you're in different jurisdictions. You're acting one minute when you come here as a natural person and then you go into a corporate person because he's just made you a corporate, corporate legal name. See, you've got mixed up in your own fraud alteration of documents for pecuniary gain. In other words, you forge documents to make money out of me okay, and everybody else in this country. Explain your reason, Natalie, of writing like this. Otherwise, I want the case dismissed. Right? Case dismissed. Just like that. That's what I want you to do. Number three. And lock them up. And I'll go and seize all their properties. With a rip. For the whole lot. Number three. Counterclaim. This is what I'm doing with Natty Flower Dew Brown. She put a claim on me. From the police department. As single person. They're liable themselves now. And libeling everybody else tampering with my case and my information and my land claim. You hear that, uh, Shannon? That's what the judge, you said to the judge 
um, when the judge said, oh, this is a pretty easy case with John Wanon, and then you said, no, this is a land matter, you see? And then the judge put his brakes on and he started talking about land because you know, being in America, federal state, law of land is admiralty, right? You had to get your authority from someone higher than Obama. Okay, so now we've got um, um, counterclaim, defendant, Natalie Fowdew Brown is now a defendant. If she's not there to defend herself, then I win the case. John Hawani Karaki Wano is the claimant, not the plaintiff, the claimant. Right? I'm a levy debtor, levy creditor claimant. She's a levy debtor person, okay? To dismiss this case, police third party, to fraud land transaction conflict of interest with the law clash of documents, not bar association authorised documents. She's using, listen, the police are using unauthorised documents that look legal but is illegal because they have no seal from the Bar Association or the barristers. A lawyer should have been doing this, not her. That's the offence. That's, that's criminal. That's criminal on the Crimes Act, 1961. Libels a whole lot of them. Okay? Libels a whole police force following those practices and fraudulent tax havens that properties mixed up in that lot too, the Panama tax havens. John Key, you're liable, you're liable because of what they're doing with that land. You're trying to scramble around to get out of this one. You're not going to get out of it. I'm too smart for you because I've been learning what you do. Right? While you're sleeping, I'm still awake. Okay? So, the Evidence Act, number four, Evidence Act 2006, offered the evidence of my shirt that Natalie Flower Dew Brown stole and took away as evidence. Shirt as my authority. That's my authority she took as a native assessor, me, King William IV surrogate king, with this badge. And Constable T. Penny was in attendance on the 15th of April 2016. That's the day we opened the King's Bench Court the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court, Kingi. I've been saying the 15th of March, but it's actually the 15th of April that we enforced all the acts we had on the 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th of February inside Te Te Marae. I've transferred them into that court and passed them from the Te Te Marae that we agreed on. Kingi? <coughs> your contract, your contract to Britain. Okay, I'm the, I'm the land commissioner for you and your contract. This is your contract to Britain that I'm talking for you inside that courthouse. Okay, as the sheriff and the judge okay, of the native court, the native court. Okay. Um, the constable Tipene was fortunate to be there with um, uh, us and the chiefs, a couple of other chiefs, and you, Kingi. We had a, uh, uh, a group there to officiate this flag, to open up for trade and investment banking with the pound note levy debtor instrument to use on anybody now inside that marae. Now the um, trustees of the Waitangi Marae itself and Titi Marae said to me they can't stop me from going inside that Marae anytime I wanted to. So that just tells you the amount of authority I'm holding with these titles that I've got for those land blocks. Uh, Ututonga titles in that land block is on the British titles. That's what I'm holding. I'm holding the Utu Tonga titles to that land 
in the Manicale titles here, on these lands, in Auckland, and the Uata titles down the East Cape. Alright? Those chiefs. Right, that's the end of that one. Um, Section 24 of the Official Information Act 1982 to have an access to personal information uh, in the District Court, Auckland District Court, or any District Court in this country, and the world for that matter. So I'm just saying, the inf under the Information Act, I require full disclosure of everything I'm demanding. And I'm demanding Natalie Flower Du Brown talks for herself, not another person. You're libeling other people who are speaking for you. The judge said, you turn up. And it means you turn up and talk for yourself and your documents because those people didn't put it together. You did. You brought them here. You did. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing because they put you up to it. Okay? So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint all you people that uh, think this is too hard. No, it's not. Not when you stay up all night and day and night and, night and day for a few years until you get it. No. The Code of Civil Procedure enforced a judgment. I must initiate this process of the Code of Civil Procedure to enforce a judgment from the judge to ask for a judgment to seize everything, property, assets, the lot, the bank accounts, the business, the lot. That's what I'm saying here. Any amount for me to get. Because the court usually recovers it with their bailiffs. I don't need the bailiff. I've already got the authority to seize it. I just couldn't use my own native authority without using the New Zealand Crimes Act 1961 because we haven't exercised our acts of King William IV, 1838 and 37 Westminster. We, we, we have the right to use those acts and hang anybody with this hat, okay? I'm just saying that because the British are watching what I say. They're watching what I say. It can go both ways. If I say something wrong, you better tell me. Because if you don't, it's likely to be right. Okay? That's what I'm saying to Shannon. Nobody's putting up a fight legally against what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> the Code of Civil Procedure enforce a judgment. I want the judge to enforce a judgment against the levy debtor, landowners, Simon Brent Roundtree and James Pierce Brown, and against 43 other people, including the police that turned up there, to shove me off the land. I had every right to be on my land and my chief's land to seize it because of the fraud, corruption that's happening in there. Uh, the land still belongs to us. And the, the fact that the LINS, Land Information New Zealand Limited, failed to register my caveat as a interest, an unregistered interest in the land. They just said, oh, we have no interest. They just, at the whim, said, you have no interest. Yet I've got everything online from the memorial on top of One Tree Hill that Ngāti Whātua chiefs tried to stop me, and Tainami tried to stop me, and Manukau, Mohi Manukau, from going up that hill and putting the plaque there. I've got the plaque here for the title to Auckland, sitting right here. We had the Ratna ministers come up the hill and bless the city of Auckland, Super, super city boundary areas of his title, right? Mohi Manukau's title, and Kapuru, the giant of Waikato, and the pound note. You see how it fits together neatly in historic terms, the legacy of what I'm saying with this title, one king to the other king. The king with the pound note here, King Tafeo from Waikato, and the flag, of a king, William, and um, king, um, king, king, William, king, 
Venus Augustus, uh, the new king of England and Britain, UK, that's hooked up with us now when I get there. Okay? Um, I state the code of the civil procedure enforce the judgment. I must initiate this process. I'm in initiating this process on this video to you, uh, Shannon. It's the best way to do it because you've got plenty of time to watch the video. To uh, collect the money and property, I will do that entitled to under the judgment. I want a judgment order from the judge to click the money and click the property as I state owed on that judgment order as the creditor, the levy creditor, right? The levy creditor. The owners of the land are the levy debtors. The police got in the road and interfered with my defaulted contract with those two landowners. So it's made her liable in that case that I'm going to seize the property as a consequence of the police actions to stop me taking my property with my authority and my chiefs. Okay, Kingy, you're watching this video from Ngāpui and Radio Wātea. I've been on Radio Wātea yesterday to advertise our business with land and Apu land. Okay, for the very first time in that Radio Ngāti Pro, where we're going on Port Awanui with that land. First time we're doing things with this flag, Kingy, and its authority. You'll see this flag start working for us after 182 years. I state the money and the properties owed in the judgment order. I'm asking you to get Shannon um, against all the judgment debtors, including the police and third parties personally referred under multi proprio Pope Francis liability law. Okay, so they are liable under what Pope Francis law that you're using. They're still using that law here. I have a right to squash it out of my sight. That's me, not anybody else's business, but that's my business. To have you sh strike it out. Strike any law of the Pope's out of my case and land and every property. And I'm applying the British Acts, 1830, 1837, and the British law that's there now, straight over these lands. Okay? And over the top of those titles that John Key has. Because of the fraud. Because of the fraud, the consequences is we have the legal right from Britain to seize it back. That's what they did back in 1868. They seized the land back because New South Wales government had illegal titles. They confiscated all these titles in Auckland and reissued them. Those are the ones I'm holding. The ones, all these titles from north down here and down the line, they seized them and reissued them. Those titles that were reissued were illegal. Now, nobody will know that. Nobody will know that, Kingy. They won't know that, unless you're in real estate and you're a broker and a bank broker at that. Unless you know you're a native person with titles and know how that works, you wouldn't know. People would not know. Police and third parties personally refer to the multi property I can't say that. The registered ju judgment, I need a registered judgment uh, Shannon, through property registrar system. I don't need to go through the property registrar system because I only want the land back. I'm not too concerned about anything. I want to walk in there and sit down and that's it because I don't need to go through the land information system at the present time because the titles are going to change. Right? The titles are going to be changed. Correct jurisdiction to the land, the system to seize the property order, seize the assets, correct the jurisdiction of land confiscation, civil warrant to seize property, a civil warrant, I need the civil warrant to seize the property, not by bailiff, um, uh, but me as the sheriff, or you, 
to assist me, Shannon, to go in. I just need you to walk in there with me and take over. Take over, Bobby, as if it was the council in Auckland seizing a property to pay for outstanding debts on council rates or something like that, or land through drug dealings. They'll seize it with a court order. I need a court order to seize the whole land. I'll worry about getting the money out of them through ANAX, Shannon, ANAX, A-Y-A-N-X, limited debt collectors in England. They can do it here. They are responsible to pick up all the debts in 250 countries under this flag right now. We have opened up 250 countries in the world under this free passage flag on the 15th of April 2016. In the Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court. Kingi, that's on record. We put on record and Constable Tipene was there to witness with um, Willie, Peter and um, um, uh, Hoheba, Epia. Right? They were there to witness the event. We went through this on Titi Marae, the third for TPPA. That day was TPPA. I spoke the fourth, I spoke again about seizing that land. We're going to seize the ship of Admiralty, the British ship beside the Waitangi Marae. We're going to seize the Marae, Waitangi Marae. We're going to seize TT Marae and the 1840 obelisk title of John Keys and bring in little bits because it's offensive. Document with no end date contract. It is an illegal, fraudulent document standing right there on your land. That's your land, Kingy. You tell me what you want to do with it, and I'll get it done through legal means. Okay? And we're seizing the ship. We're seizing the, the flags. We're seizing your flag, the, uh, the flag, the Union Jack flag, back to the war people. That's junky trying to get rid of your war, war flag, Kingy. That's your war flag. That's a British war flag. We keep that on the cross run and put this one up the top. Okay? You got that? That's how it goes. That's how it goes. We're selling, we're telling um, the barrister, he's going to act for you, you and me, on these lands, because he's got a job. He's got a full-time job with Britain. Right? That's highest he can go. It's straight to Britain. Okay? So register judgment. True property, we don't need that. We, we don't need to go through lens at the present time because we don't need mortgages. We don't have mortgages. We're getting rid of the mortgages because the Pope got rid of mortgages. They are the death knell of any family is a mortgage. Right? We have no mortgages. We just want the land back and we'll deal with the debt from that, that point on. That's all I'm interested in, Shannon. I don't want compensation through the courts because they're using that money with my mystery name on it and everyone else's mystery name. I'm talking about my own because I'm modeling this out as a precedent case. I'm making a precedent case right for the indigenous countries of the world under this flag. All the indigenous countries, listen up. You are in the same boat as what we are with the Queen and her corporate elite trusts over there and us with the king in safety and numbers with the Maya statue and memorials under this flag. Okay? So Britain. Britain, the new Britain government in Westminster. Chuck the Lords out, put the king in, King Ernest Augustus, the fifth in, chuck the Lords out, and you got a king, and you save all that money. You save all that money, you British people, and spend it on yourselves. Get a good thing good parliament set up. Get rid of those House of Lords, the upper house, get rid of them. Put the king in. He's got his right place there. Okay, that's that. I'll come there and make sure. I'll go there as an ambassador to New Zealand and the Pacific Islands. Here, one title. One title. The Maui title to the Pacific Islands is one title. Samoan, Rarotongans, Hawaiians, um, Maoris, yeah. Um, all the same, all the same, and all the other people, they're all the same time. Okay, my eyes, nice and clean and honest.
and spirit. Okay? So, civil warrant. You need a civil warrant, you know, to seize the property back. Civil debt proven uncontested. There. Now, there. I'm still writing, but I've got to write some more. But that was long enough on this video just to explain what I'm doing uh, with uh, the case. And um, I had the documents, uh, but it's in the iPad. I've loaded it up in that, and um, now I can't find, I find it. I can't find them. I'll go here. Um, but uh, all I'm saying... Oh, there it is. Oh, it's not there. All I'm saying here is this. Okay, we'll just leave. Oh, here it is. I just wanted to say the headings. So we've got the Crimes Act 1961 for police crimes committed on Cook Street, 77 Cook Street. Spare Crimes Act, or this number, Jurisdiction of the Courts Crimes Act 1961, the jurisdiction. The Crimes Act 1961, uh, oh, um, but anyway, um, I've got folders there that have got those documents in it. So uh, I think that's long enough, um, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow uh, with my barrister, Shannon Withers, um, to you. I hope this uh, is. Uh, going to save a lot of talking for me because I've got a million and one things to do on land blocks down the east coast and we've had success there with uh, the chairman um, Roger Haidawa on the heading of land blocks uh, has um, um, more or less agreed with what I've said to have a um, uh, quarry there make building materials from the natural resource there for aqua farms and for our power project on Rokumara on the um, uh, Renfrewley Bank and the Rokumara uh, for aqua farms out in the open sea for that clay uh, earth concrete homes and for bracing the hills up and for wharf and to um, stock banks for um, uh, tides coming in and uh, ripping the land apart. So all of that bill will go against John Key and his government and his followers. So all you people are supporting this um, crown side, corporate, John Key, and the Queen that's not there, you get the bill. You get the bill from us for all the damage that your government has created on our native lands. The Maori name and the Iwi name are products of John Key's colonial government in New South Wales, Australia. They made that name up. Okay? It belongs to their trade name, patents, and copyrights. That's why they set it up to dupe you all. Pakeas, everybody living here. They made it up. we gone back into our own Moai native hapu title. You see the difference? You see the difference that's been hidden? Why we're poor? Got nothing. Why we're poor? Shannon? That's the reason. That's the reason. We're going to, as a consequence of them wrecking this country and the sea and the oil spills, all of those things get the belt. We've got marshals to train um, Shannon with this authority from the community people who are more concerned with their own habitat and protection of it. We've had no protection from Alan Clark, took away the Air Force in the first place. And so we've got the British military is obligated under the flag to come here into Rangitugia and set up the military to police the whole sea while we're putting up the new tidal turbines in the whole Pacific. 60 of these platform bridges are going up in the Pacific. Straight away. Straight away. As soon as we go on the land block, it starts. And we start getting all the crooks here that have come from overseas and you're settled on these lands, you'll get found out with the marshals and not, the, not so much the marshals 
but the sheriff will be coming to look for you and he will seize everything from you because of your fraud business. That's part of our business is the fraud and corruption. We're going to fleece out of our lands. Okay? And send you back from where you came from and bring some more other people here who we think should be living with us. Okay? So uh, that's all for now. Um, I've got to finish off the rest of what I wanted to check with my barrister and I'll make another video in the morning for that. Um, part of it, the second part of my visit to the barrister tomorrow on the 5th of August 2016. So thank you very much for watching the video. Jamie, you can watch this now because it's taken me quite a while to do a little video. They're getting longer and longer. And I know you've been waiting patiently uh, to start working, but um, your family comes first, uh, and that's the priority. Your job is safe. And um, we have Moira starting uh, already on the share site. Uh, for all the people who are buying this my shares, Total Energy shares, we're going to hook up tag pay next week, and I'll be uh, paying for that. You will see that I have the um, company's house in, in London in 2012. I registered that business, but I didn't have a residential office or place of re residence. That's what I left it parked up to sort out Cook Street. And that's cost me a lot of delay. You're going to have to pay for that junkie. Everything that stopped me from going to Westminster and setting up this flag business. Of your threat with your fern flag, you tried one donkey, one too many. Now you've got your TPPA, all you people in the TPPA, in those countries, in the Pacific, you're going to get a bill. You're going to get the bill, and Annex will be going to recover it with the British military. Okay? We have the authority as their partner. We are their legal partner. Anything more legal than this is lower in rank of authority, okay? Only a king can talk that much and adhere to it. So, okay, this time we will see you later. Bye for now. John, when I'm